Welcome to MWR Life on Air. I'm your host, Melissa Schaffner. April is the month of the military child, and Sonny Smith will be here to talk with us about child youth and school services programs and events. The Vice President of Marketing and Communications from Clarksville's Economic Development Council will be here to share information about Rivers and Spires Festival, and Brittany Hellman will be here to talk about upcoming events at Cole Park Commons. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Strap on your boots and come out to Fort Campbell MWR's Riding Stables. We offer a one-hour guided trail rides in the scenic Kentucky and Tennessee countrysides. Trail rides are $20 per person and held every Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 1 p.m., and 2.30 p.m. Riders must be at least 10 years old and accompanied by an adult if they are under 18. Four Camel Riding Stables are located just outside Gate 10. Call and make your reservations today. Welcome back. Our first guest today is Sunny Smith from Child Youth and School Services. I first have to say welcome back to Fort Campbell. Sunny, we're so glad you returned. Thank you. It feels like home. I feel really happy to be back. Now you're going to tell us about what's going on in Child Youth and School Services for Month of the Military Child. This is something we do every April and uh, these programs are for children in our programs on post. Correct. This is the month that we everybody in our whole organization starting in January we really start to plan so we can celebrate probably the best kids in the world, which are military kids. And the Army and CYSS do some special things for even the smallest children. What are some of the things that, that our parents are going to be looking forward to who have their children in our programs? Probably the biggest parent that really captures the parents' attention is the kickoff parade that all the centers do. And if you're a parent in the center that have used our program before, you've been part of it. Everybody dresses up in their little t-shirts and they go out and they start the kickoff parade for Month of the Military Child. So that's number one. I know that the, the children have a special shirt and we've participated in the design of those Month of the Military Child shirts at Fort Campbell. So the kids have an opportunity to get the shirt. And um, there's even going to be the 101st band at some of the parades this year, I've heard. Right. They're trying to get the 101st band, which they've had them before. And that's always a hit because if you've ever done anything without music and then with music, and it really just adds to the celebratory nature of the parade. Now I have to ask you, what do you do with the children who aren't ambulatory, who aren't walking yet? How do they get to be in the parade? That's the best part because they have we have what are called bye-bye buggies. It's like baby limos. They decorate them um, with different artwork, and then they get pushed. So they get to the, enjoy the parade while they're sitting <laughs> with their caregivers pushing them. Are those those really big buggies that hold like six like kids? Six, like six of them, right. The baby limos, right. Baby limos, right. what a great name. Okay, what are some of the other things that will be happening in our, in our centers and maybe in the school-age services programs? If you don't go to the centers, if you don't have children in there, you'll be able to see their work uh, throughout the installation, possibly at some off-post locations where they do artwork celebrating Month of Military Child. So that will be on display a lot of times in the PX, um, commissary and then they do things like mentoring they do a lot of ice cream socials at the end of the month they do a big kidrific day where it's like a carnival but it's age appropriate for even the tiniest ones up to preschool now if you're in the SAS program there's they get um, they get a little more adventurous the older that they get so they have what are called field days okay. where it's you know competition between the buildings and then my favorite is cupcake wars where the kids um, design cupcakes, their design that they want, bake them and compete with other buildings who has the best cupcake design. I have to ask, does anybody get to eat these cupcakes? If you watch how they were made, no grown-ups want to eat the cupcakes. Oh, really? What's in <laughs> them? They're not... Well, nothing's in them. It's just a lot of fingers and hand. Not on oh. purpose, but they, it's not about eating at this point. It's right. about decorating and winning, and every once in a while, fingers, you know, get in it, and so we, it's really about the process, but yes, at the end, the kids really do start to eat them. I bet. Yeah, and middle school is doing a lot of um, community events. They're going to do like a neighborhood cleanup, and mm. then at the family fun fair, they're actually going to do like a booth where Edge and Hired are going to have some activities going so on. So it sounds there. like this goes sort of through all ages that our child youth and school services um, serve. I mean, you know, we've got kids from, what, six weeks to 18. Right. And what are some of the other things that um, Child Youth and School Services offers? And I know that you mentioned EDGE, which is a program for, that's middle and high school kids after school programs, kind of try out new things. Right. And Hired is um, where they get to work 
and it's like a, a work experience. Right. It's where they apply for a certain position, um, kind of like a, an intern, but for you know a teenager. And they'll do certain things um, on the job experience, and they actually do get paid. And all the contact information for Edge and Hired is available at, at the Taylor Youth Center. But again, it, those are two programs that you do have to be registered with child youth and school services. But probably my favorite thing that the Edge does is they do an evening um, Easter egg hunt. Oh. And so this year they're doing the camo egg hunt at six o'clock. So that's fun. In the evening, hunting for the Easter eggs is fun. Is it actually getting to be dusk and a little harder to find the eggs? Is that the intent? Right. Or last year they did it inside and turn the lights off and they use flashlights. So depending on, because they're starting it at six, so I'm not sure if it'll be dark enough for outside, if they're going to do it in or out but they had a, lo a really large turnout, so they'll probably have a high one again. Somebody needs to think about getting some glow-in-the-dark Easter eggs, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. <laughs> I think so, too, yes. Well, you know, as we're looking forward to summer, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of things happening in Child, Youth, and School Services that you want to come back and tell us about, summer camps and uh, trips. You know? Absolutely. So I hope that you'll come back and share some more with us soon. Anything we can do to spotlight CYS, absolutely. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. And we want to remind all of our viewers that April is the month of the military child. And proud. Mm, and proud. Thanks, Sunny. We'll be right back after the break to talk about downtown Clarksville's Rivers and Spires Festival. Stay with us. Are you looking for some family fun or something to do for your lunch break? Check out Hooper Bowling Center and Snack Bar. Hooper Bowling Center is fully equipped with 32 lanes as well as a private room for party. Check out the pro shop available for soldiers and families for any bowling accessories. Bring the family out for these striking deals such as Dollar Day Mondays and Cosmic Bowling on the weekends. Enjoy burgers, pizzas, and sandwiches from the Quick Service Snack Bar. For more information, please call 270-798-5887. Welcome back. Downtown Clarksville's Rivers and Spires Festival is celebrating its 10th year. And here with me now is Robin Burton, the Vice President of Marketing and Communications for Clarksville's Economic Development Council. Welcome to the show, Robin. Thank you. It's good to be here. I love Rivers and Spires, and I just want to hear all about what's going to be new and exciting with Rivers and Spires this year. Just tell us about it. Well, first and foremost, it's our 10-year birthday, so there are a few surprises at first leave. I can't tell you yet, but I want to encourage everyone to come down. It's going to be three wonderful days. Um, of course, it starts on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Public Square Stage will be up and going. We have an 80s cover band playing at 7. That sounds so like my kind of there music. There you go. <laughs> so for all you 80s fans out there, you'll be a little bit of Falco, Proclaimers, Prince, MJ, you name it, it'll be playing. So we encourage everybody to come out and really help kick it off. And then Friday, um, the festival will open around 5 o'clock that evening. And we'll have um, a couple cover bands. We have a ZZ Top cover band coming. So like there's something for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, of course, Kids Zone opens that evening, mm -hmm. which is great for entertainment for the kids. So I encourage everyone to bring their children out there. There'll be a, a, a circus-type thing going on down there. There'll be kind of a little mini three-ring circus. Okay. So um, everyone that's got the kiddos wants to come out and give them something to do, and hopefully it's nice. Yes. Wear them out. Take them home. <laughs> so well, pray for good weather. There you go. That's what we're going for is good weather this yeah. year. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the Brew Fest, which is the new beer festival coming this year. That is new. Yeah. We're excited about yeah. that. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Friday evening, it opens at 5 and runs till about 9, and then Saturday will be from 6 to about 9 o'clock as well, and it's $20 a day, over 50 craft beers, free tastings. So I encourage everyone to come out and try that as well. It's new, it's different, and of course, there's a little something for everybody. So During a brew fest or a beer tasting event, is there actually the opportunity to buy from these craft breweries as well? They won't be selling the beer. They'll just be doing the tastings, but they will have prizes and giveaways, and they're going to have little lessons about how to pair certain beers with certain food. So there will be some educational things as well, but they won't be selling the actual beer itself. Okay. Now, are we still having the wine tasting event that usually happens in the Episcopal Church? No jazz and wine this year. No Unfortunately, wine. we're not having it. I know it's been popular in the past, not to say that we won't in the future, but um, this year we're not going to be having jazz and wine. Well, having the beer event obviously right. gives a balance to that. You exactly. know, for people who haven't been interested in the wine, there there's something go. for them this year. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be always the traditional food vendors and, you yes. know, all the yummy turkey legs. Oh, delicious turkey legs and roasted corn on the cob and funnel cakes and all that good stuff. The food and the beverage are ticketed items, mm -hmm. but everything else is free. All the concerts, all the activities, everything that goes on on the streets downtown is free. So, of course, you can't beat that. There's usually lots of great vendors yes. out there, too, selling, you know, jewelry. And, and trinkets, right. what have you. So yeah. um, lots of things to do down there. And I know the 101st participates in some way. They, they do. They have static displays. Yes. The museum, the Donna mm -hmm. Pratt Museum comes out and does a huge display. And they have a lot of soldiers out there. And the kids really enjoy that. Because of some of the tanks and different things that they kind of climb all over and have the opportunity to really explore. 
So um, that's always been a great partnership. And of course, you know, the festival did in part start as a, as a thank you and a welcome home to our soldiers back when they first really started deploying in the early 2000s. So it kind of has a whole history there as well. And we really do love our soldiers and are happy that a lot of them are home also because we'll see a big turnout and we're looking forward to having them out there this year as well. Now, Rivers and Spires is an award-winning yes. event yes. for the city of Clarksville. And, and um, I know, you know, you mentioned Soldiers 101st Band, I think, is playing mm -hmm. on one of the stages. They do. During that time and actually will be down there with Fort Campbell MWR. There you go. Because there's the Mascot Mania on Saturday yes. during the day. There's a Mascots Parade mm -hmm. and, and the Mascots play games, do events. So our MWR mascots, mm -hmm. Buddy and Peanut, will be in that mm -hmm. event, as they have been for the past few years. Now, what else is going to happen on that main stage? I'm sure you've got some names that, that people will actually recognize. Coming. Well, of course, Little Big Town is our headliner this year, Saturday night at 9 o'clock. Be out there. It's going to be crowded. If the weather is really nice, which I know it will be this year, we're projected to have probably well over forty five to 50,000 people during the realm of the festival. But, of course, the headliner brings out a, the big crowd. Right. And um, so we encourage everyone to come out there and enjoy that. It's free, you know, and it's right down there downtown. And, you know, you can enjoy all the festivities before and enjoy the concert and have good family time. And, of course, we also have um, another cover band coming as well that will be um, Frankie Valley, The Unexpected Boys. So for people that like that genre of music, yeah. that'll be coming too. Um, so yeah, it does have something for everybody and that'll be taking the main stage each night. Like I said, the 80s cover band will be there Thursday. Mm -hmm. There will be um, another band play in there. The, the Frankie Valley, Unexpected Boys will be playing there on Friday night and then of course, we'll have Little Big Town on Saturday night. So there's um, Last Band Standing, yes. I think. That's a, a, a Z97.5 yes. radio station yes. event. The, the Aspire to Stardom mm -hmm. Children's Talent Competition takes place. Uh, there's stages all over downtown, and they all have different kinds of music. There's a Christian music stage. Um, there's probably some teen mm -hmm. events down there. There are. Well, we have the teen zone as well as the kids zone. So the teen zone will have a lot of Things are geared more to the 13 and up crowd. Um, you know, last year they had the, the jousting and then they had the inflatables where, you know, you run and they pull you back. And then they had like a bull riding thing out there last year. So there are a lot of things that are geared more to the teens. So, you know, it really does go all ages. You just got something for everybody and it's a great family event. What time do things start on Saturday? I mean, it's all day and evening. Right. Saturday about 10 a.m. will be the time that you'll start to really see things pick up downtown. A lot of the bands will start taking stage mid-morning or so. Um, the Christian stage, you know, you'll start having a lot more of the local um, concerts that have that are taking stage there. Um, you know, really the vendors start setting up shop and they're ready to sell early that morning. And of course, you know, we have the arts galore in the marketplace and you have a lot of the, the vendors from all over the southeast who come in and sell everything from pottery to dresses to sunglasses, you name it. So you can do some good shopping while you're there too. You know, and unique things that you wouldn't find anywhere else. I encourage people, you know, bring a little extra spending money and, and shop, too, while you're right. there. Right. And um, I also heard the thing I'm looking forward to the most, of course, is that the, the Eagles tribute band. Yes. Seven Bridges will be coming. They'll be playing Friday night at 830 on Public Square Stage. But they're um, an Eagles tribute band. It gives you that whole experience. Hotel California, Taking It Easy. You know, all the songs that you really love, the Eagles and their defining generation or period of time, if you will, they'll be playing. And that'll probably also be a really popular good draw to it Friday sounds night. like a lot of the music that's coming yes. is definitely of interest to people sure. in my age and generation but you know there's something for everybody and I would definitely encourage people to come out yes, to Rivers and Spires I've been there every year that I've lived here and I wouldn't miss it so definitely want to make sure we get out there anything else you'd like to share where can they get information is there riversandspires.com you can go on there it's a newly designed website this year so it's a lot more easier to use you can buy your brew fest tickets there you can find out what to do if there should be inclement weather um, you can find everything you need to know about the festival and, and what's going on. Thanks so much for being here, Thank Robin. you. Hope you'll come again and talk about some other things that are happening in the downtown and the city of Clarksville. Thank you. Stay tuned to hear about upcoming events at Cole Park Commons. We'll be right back. With literally tons of vehicles on Air Assault Auto's You Buy, You Sell page, it's easy to find the one that suits you and your family best. Whether it be a sleek motorcycle or a comfortable family SUV, you can find it all on the website. Just go to FortCampbellMWR.com, click on the You Buy, You Sell lot link to learn more and see pictures of current vehicles for sale. Stop by Air Assault Auto today to sell your vehicle, boat, camper, trailer, or motorcycle. MWR serving soldiers, families, retirees, and civilians. 
Welcome back. I'm joined now by Brittany Hillman, a developmental chef and management trainee from Coal Park Commons here on post at Fort Campbell. Welcome to the show, Brittany. Thanks for having me. We're so glad you're here. I want to ask you something about your, uh, your management training program. Now, how, how long have you been here at Fort Campbell? A year this past January. Okay. And before that, where were you with MWR? What other places did you get to cook? They stationed me in Hawaii for two and a half months at the Halikoa on Oahu and the Dragon Hill Resort in, in Seoul, Korea. Wow, so you're bringing some sort of resort type uh, planning to your experience here. I know we've definitely seen a, a difference in the appearance of some of our events at Fort Campbell. Tell me a little bit about some of the things that you've, you've worked on here while you've been working in, in Coal Park Commons. I was fortunate enough to be here in time last year for Easter and Mother's Day for the brunches. So it was nice to be able to put my touch on the large spreads of food. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been able to work on doing a little more upscale platters and things for events, trying to give the guests more bang for their buck, you know, making everything look nicer. And I think some of those skills that you know, you went to Johnson and Wales mm -hmm. and some of the things that you've done are, you know, sort of farewells for command spouses, welcomes for command spouses. Some of the things that you've done are just beautiful. But uh, right now we're looking forward to Easter brunch. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going to be on the menu? Well, this year we're trying to do a little more adult and child friendly. So we're doing the waffle stations, the omelet stations, you know, the live action stations that kids really enjoy. That they can make popular. their own waffles with adult supervision. We're doing adult brunch dishes, we're really trying to separate breakfast and lunch. So we have some entree dinner items. Fish? Yep, fish, chicken. We have carving stations. So just a different spread because it's hard to hit, you know, exactly one one group. So we're just trying to make something for everybody. Well, I think that there are traditional things that people expect to see on a, on a buffet brunch, but mm -hmm. I know that some of the things you're doing here have really unique touches in sauces, mm -hmm. perhaps in, in, in tastes. Um, can you maybe describe some of the recipes that you've got planned? We're doing a skillet corn. So okay. it's like taking a simple dish that you know you're so used to and just adding some extra flavors to it. So we're adding a few more veggies to it, roasting it, um, not just pulling it out of the can and throwing it out on the line right. type things. And I think that's what I'm talking about when I say, you know, people are yeah. used to seeing the same things. When you make something a little different, it, it's more exciting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I went to the wine tasting here not too long ago. I think that was in February around Valentine's Day. And it was just gorgeous. Yeah. It seemed to have a theme. Um, the decorations were beautiful, but the food seemed to kind of have a Mediterranean flair. Was mm -hmm. that your planning? Yes, definitely. I mean, I've been to the Foxwoods Food and Wine Festival in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and that is one of the, the biggest food and wine festivals out there on the circuit. And I was fortunate enough to work with an Italian chef and a baker, and they were from Italy. The baker barely spoke any English, but the spread that they put out in that one station alone was phenomenal. So I was trying to think of what our guests could see if they went to a traditional food and wine festival. And I wanted to give them that experience without having to go to a casino or wherever. So I said, I'm going to try and get the ingredients that we can around here and just try and kick it up a notch. I think people really enjoyed it, and it certainly was pretty to look at, but especially it was wonderful to taste. It wasn't just the same old sort of meatballs and chicken wings. There right. was olives and cheeses and yeah. homemade hummus, and it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know we'll be looking forward to another wine tasting soon, yeah. but um, Easter brunch coming up on April the 8th. Yep. And do you recommend that people should get tickets ahead of time? I definitely do because I know last year we had people coming in and the wait's generally not that long to get to get in to get seated. But just in case you come at a popular time, I think we will have the Easter Bunny there this year so Ooh. they can take pictures again and he'll give out candy and stuff. But you just want to be able to sit down, drop your stuff at the table, and then take your time and not worrying about interfering with your other plans. So. Absolutely. And, you know, it's open from 10 to 2, so yep. you could come before a late church service, yeah. after an early church service. Yeah. I'm glad to hear the Easter Bunny will be there. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big bonus. And, um, you know, the, what is it? Children under 5 are free? Yes. which is just amazing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely worth every penny that you spend there, and we mm -hmm. do encourage folks to get tickets early. Yeah. Um, now, th they would talk to Fran to get their tickets? Yep, yep. Miss Francesca at um, 
at Eagle Catering. She's got the tickets with her, so you can either just call ahead and you can pay at the door and just reserve, put your name down in the books for a certain time. You can give your credit card number over the phone. You can come in and pay ahead of time. So there's a lot of flexibility with that to guarantee that you have your spot. Well, let me give you the phone number. It's 270-798-4610, and that's extension 119 to reach Francesca Raisin and to purchase tickets. Yeah. So how much longer do you have with us, or is there no end you might get to stay? There, there is a possibility I might be able to stay. I'm actually not quite sure when my end date is. Um, it could be next January. It could be sometime this summer, but hopefully they'll keep me around here because I like it. <laughs> yeah, we're glad that you like it. We certainly like having you, and I really think that, like you say, our food definitely has gone up a notch from having you in the kitchen, so we Thank do you. appreciate you. Thanks for being here, Brittany. <laughs> If you'd like any more information on family and MWR events and activities, you can check out our website and Facebook page. You can sign up to receive the weekly MWR e-newsletter or pick up the latest copy of the MWR Family and Single Soldier Life magazines. You can call our 24-hour recorded information line, join our text club by texting MWR to 68683. You can listen to our radio program on 105.1 WVRY at 8.30 a.m. on Friday mornings. We're live from Muggsy's Coffee Shop on Fort Campbell Boulevard outside Gate 3. I'm Melissa Schaffner. Thank you for watching MWR Life on Air. We're supporting soldiers, families, retirees, and civilians with quality of life, events, and activities. We are your network of services. We'll see you in a few weeks. Happy Easter.